Facebook. On the book face. On the meta face. Oh, shoot. We're live. There goes our music. We all know who's the better dancer out of us, too. Oh. 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 Hold on, I gotta find my sound effects to turn it off. Yeah, I, oh, there we go. Yeah, I just switched my audio. I'm obviously taller than Say that again? Everybody knows. Huh? You're not taller than me. How not in real life. are you? Maybe in the metaverse. 6'2. You're not 6'2 in your mother's <laughs> eye. 6'2. <laughs> I'm told I'm, I'm, I'm an escalator. I'm, I'm five, I'll do it like a little kid. 5'11 and a half. Oh, 5'11 five, and five, a half. 5'11. Well, then I'm 6'11. I'm 6'4. I'm six you're not six. No, you're not. You're not taller than I am. Oh, f absolutely. I'm you indubitably taller in than you. In this, you may be taller than me. I'm much taller. Not you know real. what's hey, it, Tell me if you not get this. Not in real life. Tell me if you get this sometimes. Oh, we're going to start this in a minute, but oh, we'll start in a minute. Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Much to Say About Nothing. My name is Jeremiah J. Manero. nothing today. And I'm Jeffrey Scott Stanton. I'm going to talk as fast as he does. You can't. You won't win. Uh, but I tell can. me if you get this sometimes when you meet people, and it's, I'm discovering this, po you know, not post COVID, but when we're starting to see people now during COVID, because there is no post. Yep. Look at that. That's my Tupperware. Um, but they go, man. Gee, I, man, I thought I, you would have been taller. I, yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> what? Do I? Am I like really tall on video? Like, how does that? <coughs> no. You know what? That is psychologically. Is because oh, here we go. I know it's going to go you, to psychological. No, no. Indubitably. Fun, fun, I won't. I won't. Maybe they want to hear. We need something to talk about today. So psychologically, the reason why they're doing that is because either to them you're in an authoritative position mm. or mm -hmm. you're in a power position. And generally, people who are in power or superior positions, stop moving yourself higher than me. People in power <laughs> or superior positions are generally taller. So that's the reason being. So if you ever get the comment, oh, I thought you would have been taller, it's because they think you are have some sort of superior position over them or some power, or they're looking up to you. Therefore, they okay. assumed in real life they would also be looking up to you. Okay, so then it, you made me feel good about it. Thank you. It's Give yourself a round of it's applause. Comfort. Thank you, everybody. Thank now, you. if they ever say, hey, I thought you were shorter, then you got a problem. Yeah, they just ran over me with their car. Like, oh, <laughs> thought you'd be shorter, Jeremiah. Well, thanks for running me over. So everybody who's uh, who's watching or listening, just tell us where you're watching or listening from. Either we're, we're on Instagram over there and mm -hmm. we're on Facebook over here. So let us know where you're watching Instagram? from. Facebook. <clears throat> let us know where you're watching from. I'm always curious if people are actually watching us. We have a bunch of people watching us today. I think 1 o'clock is Why are you time. eating during the show? Just a snack. It's fine. <laughs> I got one of those I edible could arrangements. I could my coffee. Okay, I got one of those edible arrangements. Thank you, oh, Amy, you're if you're watching. Me? I can expect that tomorrow? Oh, yeah. That's what you're can sending I... me? I can expect that yeah. tomorrow? Poop emoji would be where I'd... <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, Jeff. Do you know, you I would never suggest anyone does this, but you know there is a service where you can send someone poop in a box. Yeah, it's called Ding Dong Ditch. I used to do that when I was a kid. <laughs> no, no, there actually is a service where you can do it. It oh. is not legal I mean, in all states. I mean, I did, I did, I never set poop on fire and put it on somebody's uh, step, front step, because that would be criminal mischief. Illegal? I would never, yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> would be. I wouldn't do that. No. Yeah. But I saw it on TV. I thought it was funny. You saw it on TV once? Uh, yeah, one time. <laughs> Hold on. Let me move myself over. Hey, there we go. Could you? Could we be on the same height, please? That 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 because you're not tall. Well, you're in real sitting life. down, aren't you? All right, fine. You know what I'm gonna do here? Hold on. You know look, I'm, I'm moving it up, bro. Just relax. See, look. look, this is this is. Can somebody <laughs> help Jeff out? You're only boosting. You're now. You're gonna have. You're like, no, oh, my brain is missing. And I'm I get like right here. Cut off right here. <coughs> okay. Um. So Grand Rapids. We have one person from Grand Rapids. Uh. We have people's oh, own shoot. Insta okay, I asked people, where are you yeah. watching from? I, yes, they say Instagram. Oh, and stuff Michael like that. So J. Like, like, what let state? Me highlight. I'm highlighting Michael J. Because listen, Michael, MJ, he brought me brownies once. I think it was brownies and something else. Yeah, we talked about this. Like, sometimes as speakers, nobody, nobody cares about yeah. us, right? We're going, like, at Triple Play one day, I was like, gimme, gimme, gimme. And that conference center is so big, and we got to get there, and we got to hurry up, and we got to set up. 
And he brought me some food and I think maybe even a drink. But even better, last week, he's he was waiting for me to go live for the A-Team Friday. He set his alarm. He said to wake up, but then couldn't find me because of the stupid restream. Went to all these different multiverses where I was not supposed to be. So shout out, shout out to you, MJ. We appreciate the support. Yep, fruit and brownies. Fruit and brownies. So um, hold on, wait. We have a comment. Brownies, bottle of water. We have a comment. Say it again. Um, Michelle now says, you "Now you made Jeff's head huge. Jeff's head was huge before we began, both metaphorically and <laughs> literally." I don't. I don't. I don't disagree. Yeah. yeah. So indubitably. So I thought um, that would be a good name for a podcast. What do we? The indubitable podcast. That's let's call that. It'll the be indubitable AKA, podcast. Yeah, the IP or the podcast indubitably, which would be better, folks. Put that in the comments. Do you prefer podcast indubitably or indubitably podcast? I could see like the logo with a little monocle like this. Like, <laughs> yeah, we should talk about that afterwards. I actually have a really good idea. <laughs> I have a really good idea. <clears throat> so what does everybody want us to talk about today? Because we have much to say about nothing, and J-Man refused to pick a topic for the day. So, no. um why don't you just say the workhorse Jeremiah's J Man Monero, who does all of the magic you see here, folks? And if you're on he Instagram, does Instagram things. does all this magic because we don't really do much for Instagram. But here, yeah. all of this, he just how do you, you know, have Jeffrey the blurred background on Instagram? I don't know. I'm trying to get Look, rid of it. How do you have the blurred background? I'm trying to get rid of I it. Want I swear, it. I don't want it for all the time. I just want I it do. sometimes. Somehow that changed. So if you're on Instagram, you know how I can get rid of my blurred background because I don't want it all the time. <laughs> Oh, you're on fire. Uh, but let's see if we have any topics. Michael Dude. J, man, if you got anything, you'd let us know. Here we go. Oh, we got Pierre in the building, too. The Tunda Teeth is in the house. The Tunda Teeth. If you guys don't know, uh, we, we wrote a song about it. We'll, we'll post it in the comments where Pierre, well, he's a great speaker. He is also uh, can spit bars like nobody's business. And we sent him a beat to do a song, and he stole the thunder. Nice. Mm -hmm. So back to the topic at hand that we have no topic for today. <clears throat> um, the topic what do you is content about? creation. That's the topic. <coughs> okay, great. Because I actually talked See about this I the did? other day. See what I did there? So having no so topic we were on, is a topic. We were on, um, I, I don't know if it's the public podcast we do or the internal element uh, role play call that we do every single morning, um, five days a week. If your brokerage is not doing something like that, they should be. What do you mean? I see your mic. Oh, no, you're right, because the blue is throwing me off so you don't blend. see it. So um, we were actually talking about, you know, how to plan out content or what content you should do. Because people always like, hey, what should I do in the new year? And I've been saying this for years, and Jamie, I know you've been saying it for years, too, is you need to go all in on video. That that literally is. You know, if there's one thing if you're not doing now that you should be doing is video. And <laughs> if you are doing video, you should be doing more video. However, this is what I'm going to tell you. Indubitably, <laughs> we should absolutely name this business. So this is what I'm going to say is that it's what content, you know, like people always see the market updates. Oh, I'm doing a market update video once a week. Eh, that, that's nice. Boring. We were talking about, yeah, we were talking about using video to stay in touch with your past clients and your database and your sphere and those types of things. And um, everything from one of the one of the we were talking about one of the things I'd said, and, and I know you do this because you have it as part of your bot as part of your bot. I don't know if you're a video via the bot, but is doing like a, a a buyer like the buyer process because I never spoke about this. the The way the numbers yeah. work from all your data, from all the data that shows incoming leads from any marketing that you're doing, seven out of ten of the people who contact you in any given month, one of them will buy or sell within the next 60 days. One of them will buy or sell within the next 90 days. The remaining the remainder of those five <clears throat> statistically will act within the next 24 months. So, okay. and th that's just, and, and that's just statistics. fact that those, <clears throat> yeah, so they'll say it again. Out of the 10, 10 people call you, seven are going to do something with someone within the next 24 months. So 70% of, of the people you're in touch with will do something real estate related within the next two years. Correct. 
<clears throat> one of the seven is going to do something within the next 60 days. The other one of the seven is going to do something within the next 90 days. So that In leaves 20%. Five buyers or sellers that contacted you are going to act either buy or sell. And I can't do that math real quick. Buy or sell within the next 24 months. So we're talking about planning out a, a drip campaign. Now, this is the thing. A lot of people have, oh, I have a three-month drip campaign. I have a you know a touch campaign. <clears throat> but we were talking about months. building out a 24-month or a six-month drip campaign that runs four times to those people. Because you can reuse it after six months. Or maybe you build a 12-month campaign that you run twice to those people, which I think is fine. And part of that should be <clears throat> video series, like 10 questions the buyers ask me. This is the buyer's part. 10, 10 biggest questions I get asked about by sellers. And building out not only the content, but putting out videos. And even if the video is just, even if the video, <laughs> doing that on purpose. even if the video is just, hey, up, this week, <laughs> even if the video is, well, stop interrupting me. Even if the video is, hey, this week's educational tip is the 10 dumb mistakes smart people make when buying a house and then right. having a text content, but using some sort of video in that. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Jimmy. Oh, well, thank you, Jeffrey. Let me just interject for just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so it, when you start creating that video content, you can... Uh, create customized audiences. Like we haven't talked a lot about this, but with Facebook advertising, there's so many segmented audiences and really you can be hyper-specific mm -hmm. to say, you know what? I only want people who have watched at least, right? You can go 25, 50, 75% or 100% of your video or any, never any do 100%. Or, or yeah, never do. Nobody's going to watch 100% of your video ever except your mom. Okay. No mom jokes. His mom doesn't. Ah, I was waiting. My mom, she makes it to 90% and then she's got to make coffee or something. But rather than just say anybody who's watched my videos, because those are false metrics. Many times with Facebook, it comes up in the feed and they go three second view. Nobody's getting anything from a three second view. They could care less about what you're talking about. But if you do something like, okay, I want people who have seen at least 25% of any of my videos or you can select specific videos. So you could have buyer targeted videos that you've created. Now you have a whole series, a whole audience of people that if you watch at least 25% of my buyer segment videos, I want you to see this ad. We can target that and have it go wherever you want. Same thing for seller, same thing for general, just general consumer. Yeah, and I'm not even talking about, besides the Facebook aspect of it, the targeted, I'm talking about doing your CRM. Like build that out. And then we spoke about, so Gemma, I'll ask you this because we may have differing opinions. We may have the same opinions because we I'm never sure spoke about different. this before. Yeah. To a certain extent. Because you are just different. So what, um, I just, he's eating in the middle of a podcast. So Gemma, I quick answer this question. I want to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what content would I send to the people who already know me? Because this is the thing. If I just bought a house. Yeah. I don't know if I want content saying, oh, look at the eight other I houses I just house. sold. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely not. So or, for me, it would be core value related is what I would mm -hmm. say. Things that matter to me that are non-real estate related and then things that, yeah. that a homeowner would like to learn about. So like tax season's coming up. I might send something about here's the, the home improvements to get the most bang for your buck. And... You know, any home improvement remodeler type person, they're booked out two to three months. So if you're thinking about a project, call them today. And yep. here's some people we've worked with in the past. They give exclusive discounts to our very important clients. So still demonstrating that Absolutely. you care, but not trying to pitch them in any way. And this, and this, the, the, damn, other hold on. I'll this is this turning out to be a good um, podcast all of a sudden. It is. There's a lot of great it stuff. Is. We're not planning content <clears throat> ever again. We're just going to. So this is what I'll tell you is that I've noticed for myself. Um, and other people I've coached in the past that for the people who already know you, like you and trust you, hopefully that you've done business with them before or you're there, they're, they're your past clients, fear, whatever it happens to be. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not only would I send them that type of content where it's like, hey, home improvement tips, those types of things. I'm going to send them personal stuff. Like at least once a month, they're going to get something that's emotionally charged. 
You know, something, it might be something motivational. It might be a story that I heard. Um, you know, I think I've said this before. It was like one of the stories and it's like open source type thing is like, would it take a brick to get your attention? And it's a story about this guy who, who just got a promotion. He's driving around in his brand new Mercedes and he's driving down the street and some kid runs out the street and throws a brick at his car. And he pulls over, grabs the kid and says, what are you doing? It's a brand new car, brand new car. And the little kid's like, Mr. Mr. My brother's in a wheelchair and just fell into the street. You were about to hit him. And oh. it goes through. Oh, and for the rest of the day, he drove around thinking about this after he helped the kid get up. And the guys never fixed the Mercedes because that reminder is to pay attention. And like those types of things create an emotional engagement and emotional attachment. Please take that off. An emotional engagement, emotional attachment to you. And like once a month, it would be that type of motivational <clears throat> because this is the process. Anything that you produce, be it, be it video content, be it text, be it your blog, be it your newsletter, you need to get some sort of emotional engagement because when I can get a consumer, a buyer, a seller, past clients, fear of influence, whatever it happens to be, to tie me to any emotion, it's going to further our relationship. That emotion could be like, oh, wow, yeah, that makes sense. It could be something funny, you know, because different things are going to hit people differently. So to me, at least one of those pieces you're sending out on a monthly basis, and I truly believe to all your past clients, it should be at four pieces per month. Four things per month is what they should receive from you. The problem is when I say that to real estate agents, they're like, oh, I don't know what, what? to do. Because it should yeah. not be real estate related content. One of the four should be, but the other three pieces shouldn't. So this is the premise of communications. I say something, I do something that creates a feeling inside of you and that feeling leads to a specific behavior. That, that's, that's the premise of communications. I do something, I say something, I post a video. It creates a feeling inside of you that leads to a specific behavior. So it's something like this is I want to create that, that emotional attachment and emotional engagement to me. And that's my goal. Len. Oh, Len Elder. Oh, wait, we got to give him the air horn. He deserves it. <laughs> Ben Elders in the building. So it, what do you think about that, Mr. Jamon? Jamon. Jamon. Webe Jamon. No, I think you're absolutely right. Right? Evoke emotion. And I always say it's that old uh, Zig Ziglar, John Maxwell. A million people said it, but people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And it, it, if you can demonstrate that every chance you get. Like I had a client. I have a client that he has a... Uh, he does recruit videos for like he's he was a really great basketball player, went D one, mm -hmm. didn't make it to the show, but now he does these these videos for for high school kids that want to get scholarships and that. And he's like, Oh man, I just want to do a podcast like you're doing with the video. And he's here in Rochester. I'm like, come on over. He's like, What do you mean? I'm like, Come on, let's do something. He's like, well, How much yeah. is it gonna cost me? I'm like, nothing. Nothing. Your time. Just come on over, dude. I just for me, that's 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 the everything, right? Showing people how much you care and really seeing them. <coughs> so I had. Let me give you another. Let me give you another example of. of I'm going to say this. When it comes to video, when it comes to making a connection, what's most personal is most universal. I'm going to say that again. What's most personal to you is most universal to everybody else. There's certain things which 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 are called universal experiences in psychology and NLP that we all experience these things universally. Universal experiences like driving your car for the first time, going out on a first date. We all have those universal experiences. <clears throat> so if you can tie something to one of those universal experiences that's personal, people make that attachment. I had <laughs> he's eating again. <clears throat> I had a coaching client way back when we were talking about doing video, where um, he was actually going through skin cancer. You know, he had gotten skin cancer because he used to be on the golf course, Lily, you know, five days a week at one o'clock in the afternoon to one to three. That was his thing. He worked from five o'clock in the morning till one o'clock in the afternoon, one to three. He was on the golf course, uh, three to five, he could uh, three to six. He continued doing his business. So he wound up getting skin cancer. So he's like, you know, I said, listen, let's, let's do let, like, are you okay with sharing that you have skin cancer? He's like, yeah. I said, okay, are you okay with sharing the process that you're going through? He's like, yeah. I said, this is what you do. And this is before like Facebook and stuff. And I would not do this as Facebook videos, but all your past clients, like 
your friends, your family members, would you be okay with them knowing this? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. This is what you're going to do. You're going to record a video and e-blast it out to all your clients and all your family. And you're going to tell them about that you diagnosed with skin cancer and this is what's being done. And for the next two, for the every week, what you can do is you're going to record like a, a, anywhere from a 30 second to a three minute update of what's going on, you know, treatment, everything like that. And keep it positive. Don't, you know, don't keep it negative. Mm -hmm. He got more reactions from doing that and did it over the course of six of course of six months about the different types of treatment and what he's found out and why you should use this type of um, uh, uh, sunscreen and not this type of sunscreen. He wound up getting more more responses to those videos than anything he's ever done and got more business from those videos than anything he's ever done because what's most personal is most universal. We all can go through those things. We've all gone through those things, except for you have to keep it on a positive spin. You can't be like the, oh, woe is me, because people don't want to hear that. Oh, hold on. I got a good video. You didn't like my other video before, but... I Not you great. walking in that fur coat. Dude. But this is better. Hold so, on. This is a video I shared that got a lot of engagement recently. One moment, mm -hmm. please, as I add the animated overlay. And if you're watching this on Instagram... And this is, this this is the thing. There's two story. ways to engagement. You can do the Facebook type engagement. Oh yeah, J Man, absolutely. I saw this. Can we get the audio to this? Sure, one moment, please. Hold on. This this is a great example. This is a great example. Oh, here we go. That should be it. Let's see. Nope. Okay. So, J Man, explain explain what this video is. All right, hold on. Let me stop on this guy. I'll stop it right at the right 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 moment. Okay. For those of you who are watching like this said, on Instagram. This I guy. like we said, I'm going to stop on this guy. Because you noticed. Who is this guy, Jamin? That's me. That's me. If, if you notice, let me just point something out. He said this guy because Jamin no, no longer associates himself as that person. Which is a great thing. Absolutely. I'll never be that person again. But here's because... I found this video. It wasn't one that I was like, I plan to post this, but I, I was reorganizing my studio type of situation. And I came across four cell phones and one old uh, video recorder. And so I was like, I'm looking, I'm looking at the, the stuff that's posted on my video recorder. Remember the old handheld before the, the, yeah, before the, the phones had it. And then this video was on there and I'm like, holy shit. Uh, I got to share this because not because I want you guys to go, oh, great job. I don't, that's not why. I, I want to share it so that you guys know that if you're going through something, if you're trying to get fit, like we all start somewhere. And I, mm -hmm. I, I was a fit guy that got fat that decided to get fit again. Um, not, you know, it's an everyday struggle <laughs> as I eat chocolate-covered strawberries. Um, <laughs> but it's like sharing those real personal stories. People will, like, just like you said, People reached out and like, oh my God, I had no idea. And then it's, it's, they're going, it, they feel free to then share their story. Like, hey, mm -hmm. you know what? I was too. This is what happened to me. And I, you know, I was an athlete and then I got hurt and I had to sit on a couch for a while. And, and, you know, thank you for sharing that. Cause if it helps somebody, then for me, it's worth it. Yep. And let, I'll give you, <clears throat> I'll give you more uh, psychology behind that is also this. Generally, we only share those things with people that we have close relationships with. We only share when the person's at, yep, the old flip camps. I thought it was. You, we only share those things with people who are in our inner circle. Like we don't go around saying, hey, you know, I was diagnosed with this. I was diagnosed with that. We save that and I'll call those intimate moments. We save those intimate moments to share mm -hmm. with people who know us and are closest to us. So by J-Man sharing that intimate moment, that personal moment, for everyone who viewed it, there's automatically a connection there, even if they're not going this through the same exact thing, because it's sharing an intimate moment. And as I'm saying, like this stuff, especially doing it as, you know, as part of, hey, I'm going through this, I'd like to share it with you. You know, it, it could be as simple as that, you know, video series on Facebook about, you know, learning how to, teaching your daughter or son how to drive for the first time. And about your experience, because those are universal experiences. And if we can Take a universal experience, share it. It brings people close to us because we're sharing an intimacy with them. Again, if you don't feel comfortable doing it on Facebook, don't do it on Facebook. 
if you feel more comfortable, hey, you know, I have this 300 past clients that know me and know I went from, I'll give you an example too. My, my brother, my brother, Chris, my brother, Chris is actually probably skinnier than me now. And he was overweight and he went to his coach and said, you know, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a weight loss journey. So his coach said to him, record the video and put it out there because there's so many people that are going through a weight loss journey. My brother's issue is he was drinking a, a, a whole glass of milk, like a 28 ounce glass of whole milk before he went to bed and he and them in, you know, uh, um, banana and banana nut crumb, like eating a slice of it. So he did a video series to his past clients about, hey, this is what I'm going through. For those of you who know me for years, know I've gained a huge amount of weight and I'm on this weight loss journey. And and I really feel that I, that I trust all of you enough to share my journey with you. And Lily did it and got a huge amount of business from it and a huge amount of response because it's a universal experience. Well, and I'll say... Uh... Especially if you're the type of person, I want to say it's a generational difference, but there there are generational differences where there's work George and there's personal George, right? To reference Seinfeld, there's work George and he doesn't mean personal George. Worlds collide. Uh, Worlds well, collide. <laughs> yeah. Worlds. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's like if you're not used to doing that, it'll have even greater impact because some people, you know, like you're always a closed book, Jay, man. You never really talk about your personal mm -hmm. life. And, and so when you do, when you open up like that and you are in a vulnerable place, like you're, like you said, and like was mentioned, people see a different side of you. And, and I can remember, uh, Carol Murray said that to me one time when I was speaking, she was like, you know, you never talk about your personal life. I'm like, who cares? Who cares about my personal people life? Do. And then that's where I really started talking about like how, how I grew up in the suburbs. I was one of the only Puerto Rican kids, and you know, in a, in a suburban school, what that meant, and how my my principal said I'd never amount to nothing. I was most likely to go to jail. All those things that I've I mentioned and continue to mention because that's part of what made me who I am today, mm -hmm. right? My motivation. I I had again, Jim. I'll tell you this. I had a. I'm, I'm a, for those who don't know. I'm actually a high school dropout. I dropped out of high school when I was 16 years old. I didn't like school. Um, I actually had, no, I my problem is I was too smart for my own good. And I know that now I was way too smart for my own good. And I had a, a, a teacher who said, I know I had a teacher who said, listen, we'll make this easy for you. We'll put you in special ed because then we, you don't have to do anything. Dr. Dodes was a neighbor, was one of the guidance counselors at my high school, heard this, said, knows my mother. My mother's a teacher says his mother will kill us. We're not doing that. Well, I actually dropped out of high school because wasn't fun for me. I didn't think anyone cared. I actually went was in was in college when I was 16 years old. So I went as a non-matriculating student, went through, got my bachelor's, got my master's, got my PhD, went to school to be a teacher. And I went to school to be a teacher because initially it was like, hey, I don't want if there was a teacher in school that actually gave a crap in high school, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to bring value to someone's life. And I was talking about this the other day on on a role play call is that that changed when I, you know, I put myself through school and put myself through school in sales and it changed. And I realized, you know what, I don't have to bring necessarily the value that I can bring doesn't necessarily have to be to those kids. I do what I do to bring value to the people who put in front of me, everybody who's listening to this, to their lives and, and through that process and sharing that. And I've shared it in class before sharing that. And I don't share it intentionally like, oh, to bomb with me, maybe a little bit, but it's one of those things when you share that people are like, oh, like Jeff's a real person. He's not, he's not just a person I, on stage. I just learned this about you. Yeah. Yeah. It was a high school dropout. See, high school dropout. I'm always like Dr. Jeffrey Scott Stanton <laughs> indubitably, yep. but now see that story. Yep. Yeah. Come I actually me. went, when, when I got it, I actually went back to my grammar school and uh, I went back to my old teacher. I said, I, I, I want to come and I want to tell my story. And she's like, yeah, but you're a high school dropout that made something with their life. Like, we don't want to tell people that. And I'm like, <laughs> no, we do. Like, like we do because everybody it's not only path. hate, it's, it, it's, everybody has a different path and to get, it's okay for people to get different paths. Just like in real estate, there's no one right way of doing anything. It's your way of doing it that is successful. See, I put the real estate spin on that. Uh, well, you know, I've, I get invited for career days all the time and they got like, <laughs> Here comes the policeman. Here's the fireman. Here's the real tour. Right. And then they're like, mm -hmm. so tell us about what you do. And I'm like, man, it's great. Guess what? I didn't like school. And the teachers are like, oh, uh -huh. like, Don't do that. you could do this right out of high school. If you wanted to, you could do this while you're in. No, you can't, depending on where you are in, in the country. But 
it, 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 it's what I was meant to do. Like when you find purpose in your life, right? Because my dad was very realistic. He said, hey, pick up a trade. I'm in Kodak town where you like, I can program a CNC lathe machine, a laser, all these things. And I apprenticed at a place and I was like, I will not do this. Not that I cannot. Mm -hmm. I will not do this for 30 years. Yep. I will jump because off the bridge. that's just the job. That's just the job right. to J-Man. And what J-Man actually has is a career and significance in his career. Calling. And it's the difference between, yeah, it's a calling. And that's what it comes, yeah, it's a career to calling. So it's a calling with significance. And that's one of those things where it, it's, it's there's a different path for everyone to be get there. And, and that's was like, you know, I had someone, someone once asked me, as a younger person asked me, like, how do you know when you're successful? Like, how do you know that? How do you know when you're successful? And I said, you have to know that. It's not for me to determine if you're successful. It's not up for Jamin. It's for you to determine what is successful to you. Is successful to you driving the Bentley or is successful to you raising a family or is successful to you, you know, punching at nine to five o'clock to support your family? You know, that's totally, it's, it's what's successful to you. Just like in real estate, is successful to you doing a million dollars. You stop doing that. Doing get over there is successful to you doing a million dollars a year in gross commission income, or is successful to you having a career that's putting food on your table and you can take four weeks paid four weeks vacation every single year? Like it's not for me to determine or Jamie to determine what success is or how to get there because there's different paths. Like you may be saying, Oh, I would never record those videos. Thank you. Guess what? Don't record those videos then. That might not be the path for you. Right. You know, I see all the time in, in one of those <clears throat> very large Facebook groups that are um, realtor members, real estate members, the largest one on Facebook. So you guys all know which one it is. I'm not going to say their name. Do you have to be on social media to be successful? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm like, no, you don't. You don't. What, is that, what does that even mean? Like, what do you mean? Do you have to be on social media? Like successful. And this is the thing. What's your definition of successful? Right. Because ultimately, that's the question it is. You know, you're successful can be working, you know, from nine o'clock in the morning to five o'clock at night. And that's what you want to do. And you want to make X amount of money and you consider yourself successful. Guess what? God bless you. You're successful. Simply the best, better than all the rest. Mm -mm -mm. I, I can, uh, I can tie in anything anybody says into a song. I have a high level of musical intelligence. That's do what you? It's that's what it's called. Okay. Mm -hmm. I discovered that. Did you? During COVID. Well, if that's, if that's what makes when you I, successful. <laughs> uh, you know, here's the thing. I, I feel like my definition of success is the man, the wealthiest man is one who runs home and his children run to him with open arms. That, mm -hmm. for me, is what it's all about. If I get to leave work yeah. yesterday at 3 o'clock and go watch Spider-Man No Way Home with my son, and he didn't know that I was coming home early, and didn't know we were going to the movies, like, pff, that's a success rather than... Absolutely. I moved a final walkthrough that I had to, to this morning because I'm like, nah, yeah. after three, it's dark. I don't feel like it. And also it comes down to, I think, finding out what your definition of success is, is knowing what's important to you. You know, is important to you making the most amount of money possible, but if you had to work 70 hours a week and your family ditches you because you have to work 70 hours a week, is that successful to you? Maybe. Maybe you're working 70 hours a week so you can ditch your family. I don't know. But it's one of those is it's... What's important I mean, to you? Jeff, and if you were, why is if you were my family, I would work more. I wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jeff, uh, bro, can't make it home today. Working late at the office. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay. See you later. <laughs> Have a good time. Get out. Get out. I mean, <clears throat> it, tru it truly is. So, this, you want to hear, and again, since, we, since we've shared some intimate things, as I'll say. This is this is when I determined that internally that I was successful. There was a real estate two different ways. There was a real estate agent that years and years and years came af, came after me after they had taken one of my sessions, one of my classes, and I was in another session and they came up to me and said, Thank you. And I said, You're welcome. And they said, You don't even know what I'm thanking you for, do you? And I said, No. And she gave me her story that prior to taking my class, she was like gonna get out of real estate. She had no money, was going through a divorce, this and that. And she goes, I wanna thank you because I'm making like $400,000 a year. 
She goes, and if I didn't take that class, I'd probably still be in my miserable marriage. And, went through, and I'm like, you know what? That made me feel successful. <clears throat> the right. second story is I had a, I was at a grocery store in California and 12 year old kid, maybe 10 year old kid came up to me and goes, I know you. And I'm like, no, you don't. Like, no, you're Jeff. And I'm like, what? <laughs> but, my mom knows you. Oh, so my dad knows you. And I'm like, what do you mean your dad? What to me? say? Your dad so knows you. didn't call you I, dad. I listen. <laughs> Daddy, I know you. My dad knows you. And I said, what, what do you mean? He goes, well, he used, to, he used to listen to your stuff all the time. I said, oh, is he here? And this is what the kid said to me. No, he passed away. And I'm like, this is a kid who knows me based upon his dad listening to my stuff and his dad's no longer here. At that moment, I said, that's why I do what I do. That's what makes me feel successful. You know, it's different for everybody. Totally different for everybody. But at that point, I knew, like, when you're talking about you have a calling in doing what you do. Mm -hmm. And again, somebody else may be like, oh, my success is I want to be at the national convention. I want to be the keynote. Great. If that's what you consider yourself being a keynote, keynote speaker, that's your definition of success. That's great. Those are my definitions of success. You said Pinot. I said Pinot? Keynote. <laughs> I don't even care about ever being a keynote. So, <clears throat> why, I Pino. so uh, why don't we have people in the comments put, put what, what, what do you feel like makes you yeah. successful? What matters to you most? Like yeah. to say that. How, do you know, how do you know if you're successful? What is success to you? Because again, it's different to everybody. Totally different. Jimmy, sure, I mean, we had no entire bad. topic of today, and we totally went some weird paths. I think it works. I think, I think I it like works it. too. Because here's the thing: a lot of times we 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 always talk about this, where we should have it rolling before we start. Yeah. Because Jeffrey hops on, and then he's like, "What are we talking about? You got a topic, Jay?" I'm like, "Dude, I called you out on Instagram <laughs> saying Jeff hasn't come up with a topic yet." <laughs> like, we kind of try to flip flop, like. You get one, I get one, just because, you know, content creation can, and, and really, here's, if we didn't care, we wouldn't care. Yeah. Right? That's why we're always asking you guys, hey, hey, give us a topic, hey, give us a topic, because we want to talk about what matters to you. We have to then guess and check, speculate, and say, eh, I think like this is something somebody wants to, because we base it upon our experiences throughout the week or conversations we've had or emails we've received, or even, like you said, <clears throat> I think Facebook groups or even on a clubhouse is a great way to kind of listen, watch, mm -hmm. and then say, wow, this is, a lot of people are talking about this. If you're creating content for, uh, for agents, you know, that's a good spot. Or if you want, if your clients are, are families, then maybe there's groups that have families, Facebook groups that are, you know, like Moms of Long Island. I know that's a huge group. Mm -hmm. Moms of Rochester, same thing. You go in there and you listen, guess what? You're going to hear real quick what matters most to people or what matters most to people within your neighborhood so as you look at those someone uh, on next door Instagram, groups and stuff. I think it was Aisha. I don't Aisha. Know like. Aisha. Aisha. Said, raising like great I. kids who become amazing, amazing adults. adults. I think that's a great definition of success. Len just put obtaining definitive proof that someone else benefited, use or progress because of something I shared. Great. I don't know how you ever get definitive proof. Um, Len, this is what I think. And I love that. And again, I would never say that's your definition of success. But a lot of times you're never going to obtain definitive proof. And it more is that feeling. You know, it's a lot of times that has more to do with it. And I think we have to, instead of, oh, I need definitive proof. I need this. I need that. Well, maybe it's, it's maybe it's more... just like you said, like it's somebody coming up to him because he does a lot of yeah. instructor development as well. Absolutely. Come up and I'm like, yo, Absolutely. hey, Len, that time you talked about this, mm -hmm. it made me better. It changed my entire, I yep. think we can all equate to a moment where we had an instructor, a trainer, a speaker where we were like, shit, that changed my life. I remember it was Les Brown when I was. 22 years old who said we must do the things today that others won't do so that tomorrow we can have what others won't have yeah my my definitive moment is the wow that i actually wrote it down in a, in a notepad i was at a seminar and the person had had said obligation without commitment equals a mess 
and I wrote it down just in a little notepad. And I was flipping through one day and I saw it. And it just like, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And I just happened to be flipping through and it just hit me and I'm like, yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. Like that was the it's kind of defining like moment at that part in my life. One that I've heard that I use a lot, the desire without discipline leads to disappointment. Yep. Where people Absolutely. are like, I want to do this. How can I do it? Like, do you really want to do it? Are you, are you ready this, to make the commitment and have the discipline? And this is the, the thing. Delay the gratification. If, if you feel obligated to do something, but you're not committed to do it, only a mess can happen. Like nothing good can come out of it. If you feel obligated, but you're not committed to, and I don't care if that's a relationship, if that's business, if that's a client, if you feel obligated to do business with a client, but you're not committed to do business with a client, that's going to be the client that has a, a miserable experience and is going to badmouth you all over your town. doesn't matter. I'm wondering if my speaker hears wanna, you talking on my phone. I want to know how you the get the down. blurred background. I wonder how you get that blurred background on, on IG. I refuse to call it Instagram, by the way. I have to call it IG because I'm cool. I'm really oh, not. you're totally, indubitably. <laughs> Folks, is there anything Are we else yet? you want to add here to the conversation? Are we on I feel yet? Like Are we live? Good. Are we live? This is a good. <laughs> you guys saw the promo. This. You know, and my neighbor would say, yeah, off. Would it <laughs> we go, we're not live, Jay. I know we're live. I see it's live. I know. I was just about? messing with you. I know. I'm like, no, I don't you believe know, you. You're like this. You're like my older brother who used to go, here's all my buttons. Here's like, all no, my buttons. I don't, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. No, nope. we're not nope. live. I don't, I don't believe care, you. Care, Jay. Nope. I don't care. It's fine. I don't care and it's one of like. the things that I don't like about all these changes. Like Facebook constantly makes changes to how they do the live streaming of, of video. And now it used to be you had a unique URL for the scheduled video. Now they do a post, mm -hmm. yeah, a that post I don't like announcing it. And then when you go live, it's a separate post, which yeah, is ridiculous because just... for the marketing purposes, it's very frustrating. Yeah, that, that I'm, not, I'm not a fan of the way that works. Oh, wait, let's finish with this. If you're watching this on Instagram and you have not followed Jeffrey, make sure you follow him. If you're watching it and you haven't followed me, do it, okay? And if you're watching this on our page, on our personal page, we're, we're, we're maxed. But on our pages, on our business pages, uh, please like, follow, and be sure to hit notifications. Like, follow, share, subscribe. <laughs> like, follow, share, subscribe. Pound that notification button. That's Pound that right. Listen, uh, it, you know, our statistics show you that shows us that 73% of you who are watching this have not yet subscribed to the channel. So please <laughs> make totally sure that you that do. <laughs> well, you know, 93% of statistics are made up on the spot, folks. Okay. Exactly. And 64% of the people saying that are full of, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 40% of the time it works all the time. 40% of the time it works all the time. And 60% of the time it just doesn't. But if you try real hard in May... 24% of the time. And 100% of the time, J-Man will take a bite out of a piece of fruit when we should be doing a podcast <laughs> or a video cast. Um, and then can't say anything because his mouth's full of chocolate and strawberries. No, I'm thinking about something. And now you got all chocolate in your teeth and you're going to look all weird on them. <laughs> I got it. No, we're good. I think, I think we digress so far at this point. <sighs> we're about the 45-minute mark. If you guys about. got nothing else, I'm about to hit that music and start rocking them beats. Mm -hmm. I'm not dancing this time. Mm -hmm. I'm not dancing. Well, you, you make fun of me every time I'm dancing. When have you danced? This is a question. Michael keeps on saying, Snugglepuss says, indubitably. That's like the third time he's actually saying. Indubitably. MJ, we, MJ we, we, we saw it the first two times. <laughs> I saw it. That's only the second time. Uh, let's see what we got. Came for the Came? entertainment. Oh, I, like, for the, I oh, love dude, Len's I love it. Comment. I love it. Put him back up there. There we go. Came for the entertainment stage for the education. Bow, Thank you, Len. That bow, means a lot bow, to me. I don't know. Bow. I don't think it means a lot to Jay Man. But that's Len Elder. I don't well, think it means anything. And here's to the good. This is why it's a I good don't think it means combination. Anything to Man. Yes, it does. No, I don't think so. I, not what I'm you're entertaining. About him the other day. You're educating. It's edutainment together. That's why. Because like you're always like, indubitably, we have to keep on, on topic, Jeremiah. I, I'm, like, I'm going to eat a strawberry never, right now. Prior to this podcast, I've never said indubitably. And you're the one who actually said indubitably before I said indubitably. 
Mm-mm. If you're watching I've never this, said the word. and you think before you met Jeff or heard him speak for a longer period of time, that he would be a person that would say indubitably. Say yes, he would. In the comments, please. But again, on, you're the on one who said that word prior to me ever saying that word. Because if I was at a networking event and I saw you across the way, I'm like, I bet you 10 bucks that dude will say indubitably. Just you would have lost 10 bucks. A look. I know, but it's just perception. Like, <laughs> The glasses, the doctor, like, oh, with glasses, what are you getting? Monocle? I don't wear a monocle. I don't wear a monocle, indubitably. (laughs) Oh, shoot. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to be someplace and just use the word indubitably by accident now, and I'm going to be like, Mm -hmm. oh, God, why he keeps on saying that? No, you're totally. All right, are we done with this? I'm going to have t shirts made. Cartoon version with a monocle that says indubitably. indubitably. I, if you. I will oh, wear, if you it. send me one, I'll go on Fiverr today. I'll have somebody do do the mock up. I will absolutely, absolutely, one hundred percent wear it. Hi, Don. Proudly wear it. Glad to glad to see you on the live stream, Don. Who's that? Don That's my uh, my oh. best friend. Oh, Don over there. I yeah, I don't. I the Instagram's over there. Okay, so um, I don't. I don't necessarily know if we have anything else. Well, it's important that we. Use the rim shot when you say something funny. So you didn't say anything funny, as usual, so I'll just play that. <laughs> Do you see the look of disgust on my face with you? Do you see my look of disgust on my face on you? Oh, oh, hold on. Here. Come on. Sound just... I want everybody on Instagram to hear it, too. Oh, wow, the Instagram's bouncing all over the place. Please stop. Please, just please, please, please. I'm hot from all the chocolate. <laughs> all right, folks. Yeah, man, it was fun. Have an enjoy. See you in the next one. Okay. That is. Jeremiah Jamie Manero. Oh, hold on. I am. No. We didn't stop the broadcast yet. We're still this on the is air. Jeremiah Jamie Manero with J-Man Speaks. And that is. And I'm Jeffrey Scott. I am Jeffrey Scott Sandwich, Douglas Elliman Real Estate. Thanks for tuning in to Much to Say About Nothing. We'll see you next time and make it a great day, folks.